estradiol, oral micronized progesterone, Premarin, Provera, birth control pills, supplements, lifestyle changes. What's the most effective and safest treatment for menopause symptoms that's supported by the evidence in the medical literature? I'm Steve Goldring from simplehormones.com. I help patients and healthcare practitioners with easy to understand patient education resources. Most of those are about hormone optimization. Well, one of the areas that I've been especially fascinated by, and I've done a lot of surveys, is menopause. Hot flashes, weight gain, irritability, depression, anxiety, insomnia, vaginal dryness, painful intimacy. All these and many more symptoms can really be completely devastating for women in menopause. I know because I've surveyed more than 2,500 women in menopause and heard some heartbreaking stories from them. But what's the very best way to treat menopause? A careful, thorough review of the medical literature can help us determine what the best way to treat menopause might be. Of course, we'd want to take a look at the giant Women's Health Initiative study. That study tells us some things about hormone replacement, although it definitely doesn't tell the whole story. It's also crucial to include the data from several other important hormone replacement studies from the past 20 years, things like the Danish Osteoporosis Prevention Study, or DOPS, the Kronos Early Estrogen Prevention Study, or KEEPS, the Early versus Late Intervention Trial with Estradiol, or ELITE, the E3N EPIC Cohort Study. Each of these major research studies sheds light on the most effective and the safest treatments for menopausal symptoms. Well, based on my understanding of all these studies about hormone replacement for menopause, here are some evidence-based recommendations for hormone optimization providers. By the way, if you are a hormone optimization provider, the chances are pretty good that you already are very familiar with these treatment strategies. This video might be most helpful in maybe educating your staff and helping them understand where it is you're coming from in treating menopause. If you are a patient, please know that I am not offering medical advice here. This video is for information and educational purposes only, and in no way should it take the place of an evaluation by a qualified, experienced healthcare professional, somebody who can assess your specific hormone needs and your, your lab values and your hormone situation. So here are my general recommendations for treating menopause symptoms. First of all, Oral or transdermal estradiol is the single most effective treatment for systemic menopause symptoms like hot flashes, weight gain, mood swings, irritability, brain fog. Number two, oral micronized progesterone and not medroxyprogesterone should always be given along with estradiol to decrease the risk of endometrial hyperplasia. That's the buildup of the lining of the uterus that can lead to endometrial cancer. Estradiol given by itself can cause endometrial hyperplasia in a woman with an intact uterus, that is, somebody who hasn't had a hysterectomy. But also, oral micronized progesterone is absolutely essential for women in menopause with or without a uterus. It helps to treat depression, anxiety, and insomnia, all of which are serious possibly even life-threatening symptoms of menopause. Estradiol and or DHEA in a vaginal cream or a suppository is the most effective treatment for vaginal atrophy, vaginal dryness, and painful intimacy that comes with menopause. Other treatments, supplements, exercise, lifestyle changes, antidepressants, anti-anxiety agents, sleep medications, those may help with some menopause symptoms some of the time, but the root problem of menopause will never be addressed until the hormone deficiency is resolved. Oral estradiol has been shown to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, but only when given early in menopause. If estradiol is withheld and only given after five or 10 years of menopause, atherosclerotic plaques have had time to build up in that woman's arteries and estradiol may actually cause those plaques to be dislodged and maybe even encourage a heart attack. Transdermal estradiol has no effect on cardiovascular risk, either positive or negative. Oral estradiol may increase the risk for blood clots, especially deep venous thrombosis or pulmonary embolism, but that's only in patients with a history of blood clots or a genetic predisposition. Providers should exercise caution in patients with a clotting risk factor like factor V Leiden. 
Transdermal estradiol does not appear to increase the risk for blood clots. Optimal estradiol and progesterone levels, not too high, not too low, but just right, have been shown to decrease long-term health risks, including osteoporosis, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, cardiovascular disease, heart attacks and strokes, breast cancer. If you're a healthcare practitioner and you're interested in some menopause references, click the link that says menopause references, and I'll send you a list of the menopause references that I've found most helpful. If you're a patient looking for some help with menopause or some other hormonal issue, I'd be happy to try and find somebody near you to help with your estradiol and progesterone among other hormones. Click the other link that says find a doctor and I'll see what I can do for you. I can't promise anything, but I'll do the best I can. If this video has been helpful at all, click the like and subscribe buttons and get notified whenever I post a new one. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to talking to you again soon.